Hey YouTube, sorry it took me a little time to get back with you on part two of making the bread. I actually made this loaf and took it down to my brother-in-law and my sister and it really tasted great. This is a loaf that I made out of the same dough the prior week. Uh, this loaf, I used three quarters of the dough, could have used a little less. This pan was a 10 inch by I think four, three and a half inches deep. We're gonna start by adding a little flour to the bench. Uh, we're gonna use half of the dough. Today we're making an eight by four inch loaf. Uh, what I did was I took the bread, the dough out, placed it in this metal bowl that had been sprayed with a little bit of cooking spray, formed it into a ball, put it in the, the bowl, and covered it with a towel so it could come to room temp. After it sat there for about an hour, then I started kneading with it. Kneading process is really easy. Just put your little flour down. First take your hand and try to press all the air out of it. Then you'll start doing what I call a tuck and a fold. You're gonna turn your bread, fold it over, push it down. You're gonna fold, turn, fold, tuck. Turn, fold, tuck. It's that easy. You can use both hands or you can use one hand. This really does make a nice soft loaf of bread pretty similar to what you would get in the store. Of course, homemade bread always tastes better. Uh, if you see that your, your dough is starting to stick a little bit, just add a little bit more flour. This hadn't quite got warmed up enough, so I just used my hands to work with it, try to warm it up to get those glutens to start releasing a little bit more. And add a little bit more flour to the bench so we can... Uh, Start kneading on the bread. Once it uh, softens up a little bit, we'll go back to kneading a little bit more, but it was starting to tear on me, so I decided I would use my hands to warm it up a little bit. Uh, working with dough, it's a little bit of an art, uh, but as long as the end product is what you want, uh, just because it starts tearing like this doesn't mean that it's a failure. Uh, that just means that your glutens aren't ready to stretch yet. So you've just got to work with it. That's why you've got to knead it a little bit. Let it rest. Knead it a little bit. Let it rest. You're actually going to knead it. Let it rest. Knead it. Let it rest. You're going to knead it one more time. Let it rest. Form it into your loaf. Put it in the oven. And you're going to do this about an hour to 90 minutes apart. You'll be able to tell that it's ready to be Knead it again when the dough almost doubles in size. By allowing it to rise and then you knead it again, this is what makes your bread softer and lighter. Uh, just gives you a little bit better texture. Uh, there are some recipes out there. In fact, I have one that's a no knead recipe, but it works better for thing, more things like rolls, <coughs> pizza dough, uh, just miscellaneous <clears throat> bread doughs that you would need in the kitchen but if you want a really light dough to make a, a loaf of bread you're going to have to knead it a little bit to get it the way you would want it to taste not a whole lot of work I worked with this probably around four or five minutes and that was it uh, the second time you're going to only maybe do three minutes or so because like I said, we are doing this three times, so it doesn't take a whole lot of time. Uh, this silicone mat I'm using is really nice, because if I've got a little bit of flour left on it, I just fold it over, and then the, come back in an hour and unfold it and use it again. But each time you let it rise, you're going to fold, form it into a ball, put it back in the bowl, cover it with your cloth, set your timer for 90 minutes, and come back. After we've got the kneading process over with, our next process is going to be to prepare it to put it in the loaf pan. Okay, we've got it back in our ball. We're going to, we're going to spray a little bit of Pam or cooking spray on it. This is actually an olive oil cooking spray. We're going to cover it with a towel. Let it sit and we're done. We'll come back 90 minutes and work with it again. Our 90 minutes has already passed. It came back. You can see how much it has risen in the pan. But this time we've already 
this is my we've already done our three rises and knees so we're ready to just fold it over a little bit I'm just taking my hands and kind of folding it and rolling and we're going to place it straight in the pan that's been sprayed with a little olive oil cooking spray uh, you do want to make sure you get it pressed down in the pan enough to where it's going to be a level across the top if not it'll rise high in the center and be low on the sides so I spray it with a little bit of spray so it doesn't stick to my hands then I'm going to work with it and try to get it as level as possible in the pan this only will need to rise about 45 minutes to 50 minutes and then you're able to stick it in the oven you're going to bake it on a 325 degree oven and it's going to take it probably about 35 to 40 minutes after about 20 minutes mine looked like it was pretty brown so I covered it with a piece of foil and let it continue baking once it's done you can check an internal temp it needs to come to at least 165 for it to be done Okay, our bread is just about done. We'll just take it out of the oven. Once we check and see that it is the internal temp of 165, we're going to cover it with foil, put our cloth we've been using back over the top of it, and let it cool like that. Okay, allowing it to cool like that, it keeps your crust nice and soft. Hope you enjoy the recipe. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments. If you haven't joined our channel, do so. Click on that little notification bell so you get notifications of any new videos coming out. This is the Pressure Prepper, and I'm out.